119, verse 126. Psalms 119, verse 126. It is time for thee, Lord, to work, for they have made void thy law. It is time for thee, Lord, to work. Looking at the newspaper this last week, I find that my eyes can't keep from being confronting a picture of Madonna as she celebrates bad manners. It doesn't even find itself worthy of being called celebrating sexuality. It's not that good. She doesn't have that much to offer in that picture. She celebrates bad manners. But it's really not Madonna. Madonna is the one who's laughing at everybody. She's laughing at the press. She's laughing at the media because she's found a way to get what she couldn't pay for as far as coverage. And she's found out that if you're obscene enough, that this generation wants to stop and see just how obscene you are. It is not a exercise in art or craft. It's an exercise in psychology of knowing that this generation hasn't grown up. That those who are in places of leadership haven't grown up. That we are people today who still would like to be able to exercise as best we can to protest against good manners. Good manners starts with respect and love for people and all that has happened up to our time. It's ability of receiving in that moment an appreciation of what has come before us. It's the ability of knowing that I'm not the only person who's there. It's the ability of knowing that my mannerism affects other people. It's a way of saying, I see you. And in the midst of this time, we look and find that there's so many places, a real expansion of this protest that says, I'm going to shock you. I'm going to cause you to notice me. You'll never say you didn't see me. When I get done with this hairdo, you'll see me. When I get done with this pair of jeans, you'll see me. When I get done with this way of makeup, you'll see me. You're going to notice me. Not by my achievement, but by the fact that I am able to get attention, and that's all that it matters. I'm going to make my statement. But it's not the individual that's making the statement. It's the creation that goes on in the media that makes this something. How many times the cameras come out of the little van, and people run to do what they wouldn't do otherwise because we're on TV. How many times television has made the statement, not the people, but television says, go ahead and show us. Go ahead and put on your act. Go ahead. You can do better than that. We're waiting for you. We'll get some footage of this. We'll splice it together. Make your statement. Make it as crazy as you can, and there'll be somebody who's going to buy it. But there's somebody who doesn't buy it. Number one, God doesn't buy it. The thief comes to steal and to kill and destroy. There are legitimate temptations in life. There's the person who struggles with the thought of divorce. There's the person who struggles with the thought of honesty. There's the person who struggles with the thought of truth. There's struggles in life that are real and legitimate, and only God gives us grace through those hard places. But there is an insanity in this hour that says that we are so bored with everything around about us. Give us something in this moment that's crazy. Have you noticed it's gotten into humor in a very special way? Now when you hear a joke, you wonder if it's laughing at you. What's the punchline? What's the purpose of the whole thing? It's insane. You look and you see half the things that are put down in comics. You look and it's insane. Somebody's laughing at somebody. You buy the Mad Magazine and you look and there's something insane about it. You don't really get the grip, but you realize that there's somebody that says this whole thing's coming down because I've got the string that makes it unravel. But I want to tell you, this whole thing's not going to come down down because God's the author and he said I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it 
There's an insanity in entertainment today, and it looks as though adult people who ought to be responsible are the one that make it work. It's the newspapers, the press, the media. They get out there and say, this is special. Listen, sin is never special. The sin of this hour is the same of any hour. And Madonna needs Jesus Christ more than she realizes. And all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. She's not special as a sinner. She is only a person manipulating a manipulating system. But God is able to set her free. He's able to set you free. He's able to set this generation free. If God works, there's a miracle. We need to put our trust in God. It's time for thee, Lord, to work. It's time for God to work. There was a time when people had respect, and some still do. There was a time when people wanted to go and be able to have the best of bearing and the best of attitude, and some still do. There was a time when people understood how much they were worth, and some still do. But there's a multitude in this hour who feel like everything is garbage. Everything is a four-letter word. Whether it comes from a woman or a man, it's just garbage. It doesn't even have to be sexual. Just so it stinks. Just so it's garbage. Just so it's filth. But I want to tell you that God created the earth, and God created man, and earth is worth living in. And in this hour, God says, I set before you an open door and no man can shut it's worth living today it's worth being alive today the thing that we can celebrate is life thank god for life he's the one who's given us life and we need to rejoice in it it's a gift from god how much the desire that we have for redemption is coupled with the fact of its value that we are reaching toward Oil will come out of the ground and will always have something for energy as long as the price is high enough. If the price per barrel is high enough, it's amazing how much will shop, uh, crop up. It's amazing how much oil there be when we realize that there's enough when the price is right. There's enough diamonds when the price is right. We see it. We bring ourselves to the place of finding it when there is enough. And so it is in this hour when we look and see the destruction of humanity. How can we have any hope in this moment when we realize that people are important and people are worth something? It begins with our own estimation of ourselves through the cross of Christ. It begins with our realization that everybody around about us is worth much. When we sense how much people are worth, there can be redemption. When Christ went to Calvary, what he did was went to the cross to show, number one, how much man was worth. He was willing to die for us. We're worth something today. Fallen, broken, and bruised, we still are worth something in this hour. And it's an hour that we can rejoice. Praise God, man is worth something. How much is a man worth? He's worth a lot more than a car. Not only in the eyes of God, but in the eyes of truth anywhere. You can rent a car for $15 a day. Go to budget, get yourself a little car, you can get it for somewhere around $15 a day. How much does it cost to rent a man for labor? It runs you close to $80, give or take, for sometimes with all the fringe benefits, it's more. Some people have been able to negotiate and get less, but man's about $80 a day. Why? Because a man's worth more than a car. A man's worth a lot more than a car. We turn it around and we think a car's worth more than a man. We've got to get back to God's estimation, even the estimation that works in the world that we live in. Men are worth something. Women are worth something. Children are worth something. Marriages are worth something. Homes are worth something because of the people that are involved. You look around about and you'll find that the value doesn't come because of the outward external material things. Sixteen schools have been slated to be closed in the city of Detroit. Places of learning and education where that many people have gone and have been blessed as they've gone through year after year. How much are they worth when they get rid of them? Oh, probably less than 150 on an average, 150,000 per school. That's not very much money. What does it cost when it's working? Oh, maybe a million dollars in the course of the year. What's the difference? The difference is that people add to the cost. Why? Because people are worth something. 
I tell you that you're worth something in this hour. That's not a slogan. That's not something that's said by a party in politics. That's something that's said by God Almighty. That's said by God's statement to the universe. You're worth something. You are worth something. Not just you, but everybody's worth something. Those who aren't in church today are worth something. The little children on the street playing are worth something. Those that are in the hospitals are worth something. In the insane asylums, they're worth something. In the VA hospital, they're worth something. People are worth more than